drilling mud. We all know what it does. Cools the bit. Brings cuttings back to surface and holds back the formation fluid. It's this last thing that concerns us the most because if we can't stop the formation fluids from entering the well, we could have a kick on our hands and we all know what that can lead to. One of the bigger problems we can have when we're drilling is gas. If the gas gets into the mud and we don't realize it, it can cause some real problems for us. If the gas is not removed from the mud, the mud weight is lowered, and when we pump that gas-cut mud back down the hole, we reduce the hydrostatic pressure and increase the possibility of taking a kick. That's why we want to remove any gas that comes out of the well bore. The way we do that is with this thing. It's called a degasser. It pulls the gas out of the mud. It's positioned so that it pulls mud out of the first settling tank after it's gone over the shakers. Then it discharges mud into a second settling tank. It's real simple to operate and maintain with few moving parts. It's got just three basic systems. A horizontal cylindrical tank which processes the mud a vacuum pump that removes the entrained gas and pipes it away, and a jet nozzle that's usually powered by a centrifugal pump. The jet creates a low pressure area in the discharge pipe to unload the tank. This Swaco degasser, which most of our rigs have, can handle up to a thousand gallons of mud per minute. Now, before we go any further, Let's look at the theory of operation of this unit. It's really a simple, foolproof system that's easy to understand. The gas-cut mud that comes out of the hole first makes its way over the shakers. This is where the larger chips and cuttings are removed. From there, the mud goes into a settling pit. It's here that the mud gets drawn into the degasser through this suction line. The gas-cut mud is drawn into the vessel by the low pressure created in the vacuum tank. This lower pressure is created by the vacuum pump drawing out air in the tank and by the jet nozzle creating a low pressure area at the discharge. So the gas-cut mud enters the tank, flows over a full-length baffle. Its only purpose is to spread the mud out over as much surface area as possible. When this is done, the entrained gas bubbles, which have increased in size because of the low pressure inside the tank, escape through the thin layer of mud. At this point, the vacuum pump goes to work because it's constantly drawing air out of the tank. The pressure in the tank is lowered. This low pressure causes any light substance to rise and be sucked into the pump. This happens to the gases, which are sucked out of the tank and piped a safe distance away. The Swaco degasser, when operating properly, will remove up to 98% of all gases, and this includes H2S. Well, after falling off the baffle, the degassed mud is carried out the discharge line into the second mud pit. The jet nozzle keeps the mud moving out of the tank and controls the volume put through the degasser. The pump feeding the jet nozzle draws mud from the second tank, which contains previously degassed mud. That's it for how it works. There are just a few adjustments to make and indicators to watch. It's a foolproof system designed for simple operation and a long life. Okay, let's take a closer look at the parts that make up the degasser. The suction pipe brings the gas-cut mud into the unit. It should be about six inches off the bottom of the pit so that you'll avoid plugging the suction line with barite and heavy solids. 
A butterfly valve controls the amount of fluid flowing into the unit. It's usually left in the full open position. The suction line connects to the tank at this seal. These three wash ports are open when you want to flush the unit out. The discharge line can be hooked up to either of three ports depending on where your mud pit is. The jet nozzle is placed here on the discharge line. You have your choice of two nozzles depending on what kind of pump you're using. A one and a half inch nozzle would be used with a centrifugal pump. It should deliver about 40 PSI minimum pressure. If you're using a piston pump, you'll want to use a 5 8 inch nozzle, and that'll require 250 PSI minimum pressure. Now, as we showed before, the interior of the tank contains a long baffle. Here's what it looks like. The mud flows into this pipe, which has the top cut away. When it gets full enough, it spills over the side and forms a thin layer of mud on both sides. And after the mud falls off the baffle, it runs to the end of the trough where it goes out the discharge line. This float ball keeps the mud level in the degasser from getting too high. The vacuum pump and the three horsepower explosion proof motor sit on top of the degasser. Next to that sits a water trap which removes moisture from the gas line. And this gauge tells you how much vacuum the pump is creating. To check, you close this one inch valve which isolates the pump from the vessel. Well, if the pump is operating properly, it should read 25 inches to 28 inches of vacuum. This three-way valve controls the amount of fluid in the tank. If the fluid in the tank gets too high, the float ball raises up, opens the three-way valve, which lets air into the tank. The air in the tank reduces the vacuum, allows less mud to enter the vessel. When the float valve settles back to its original desired position, it closes the valve and recreates the vacuum in the tank. Well, so much for the parts description. Let's look now at the daily pre-start and start-up procedure. First, you look at the oil level in the vacuum pump. There's a clear indicating tube on the side of the pump, which should be about one-third full. Look at the oil to see if it's clean and moisture-free. And if the oil is low, add some. Use SAE 30 or 40 non-detergent oil. Your next check is to make sure the one-inch valve is open on the vacuum line and that the butterfly valve on the suction pipe is open. Next, drain the moisture out of the water trap. That's done by opening this valve and letting the water run out. Be sure you shut the valve when you're through. Now you can start the vacuum pump motor. Check for movement of the three-way valve. It'll indicate to you that fluid is entering the degasser. And when you see some movement, open the valve in the mud line so that the jet nozzle pulls the fluid out. Never open this valve until positive indication is gained that there's actually fluid in the vessel. If the suction and the discharge pipe were plugged and the jet was turned on, it would fill with fluid and rupture. After you've confirmed there's fluid in the vessel, adjust the mud flow to the discharge jet nozzle to pull at least as much mud through the degasser as is being circulated. That should be all the adjustments you'll need to make. And then you can go about your other duties. All right, when shutting down the degasser, you simply stop the vacuum pump, shut off the auxiliary pump, which powers the jet nozzle. If you're not going to use the degasser for a few days, you need to flush it thoroughly with fresh water to avoid any buildup of solids inside. To do this, operate the jet at normal pressure with the vacuum pump off. Flush the degasser with clean mud through the two inch wash lines for at least two minutes. Then close the two inch ports. Remove the six inch ports and wash the inside of the degasser thoroughly with water. Some other simple maintenance tasks will keep your degasser running for a long time. Every so often, take the belt guard off the motor and check the belts for wear. 
Should be about half inch of play in the belts. Get some WD-40 or liquid wrench and spray the three-way valve clean so that it has freedom of movement. Do that and every month or so, depending on usage in your area, you need to change the oil. To do that, unscrew this plug, let the oil drain out. Then screw the plug back in and unscrew the filler nut. Then put some SAE 30 or 40 non-detergent oil in. Check the oil level sight gauge to see when you've got enough put in. It should be about a third full. And while you're looking at the motor, examine all the electrical wiring for any physical damage. Any worn or damaged wire should be replaced. Every six months or so, the electric motor should be greased. See your manual for details on how this is done. If you're having troubles with the operation of your degasser, it's probably something that can be easily fixed. Let's look at some of the most common situations, and let's look at their remedies. Too little mud being treated. Too much mud being treated. Air being pulled into your unit. Insufficient vacuum. Clogging of your unit with mud. Vacuum pump and motor problems. Buildup of bayrite on the intake and discharge ports. Well, if your degasser's not leaving the mud gas free, it's probably due to the following. If too little mud's being treated, try increasing the pressure on the jet nozzle. If that doesn't help, the nozzle's probably partly plugged. Clean it out. If the opposite is happening and the degasser's pulling more mud than's being circulated, reduce the flow to the nozzle. If this can't be done, then partially close this butterfly valve in the suction line. If you find that air is being pulled into the system, check for leaks in the pump packing or in the discharge line from the degasser to the jet. Make sure air is not being picked up at the suction or discharge pipe. If it is, increase the mud level in the pit or lengthen the discharge or suction line. Remember, your suction and discharge line should be about three feet below the mud level in the tank. If the gauge on the top of the degasser indicates less than eight inches of mercury, it means you have insufficient vacuum in the tank. First, check the vacuum pump. To do this, close the one inch valve on the vertical vacuum line. The gauge on the vacuum line should read between 25 inches and 28 inches of mercury vacuum. If it reads less than this, it means your problem is between the valve and the vacuum pump. To remedy, check and drain the water trap, check for leaks in the line, check the vacuum pump, or check the gauge itself. If the vacuum gauge reads about 28 inches mercury vacuum with a one inch valve closed, it means your problem is between the valve and the suction line of the tank. Check the valves to be sure they're not plugged and that the float ball moves freely. Listen closely to the seals and piping to see if there are any leaks. You'll be able to hear the air entering the vessel, and if you do, you'll need to replace a seal, or perhaps just tighten the bolts. If the degasser becomes clogged with mud, run some clean mud through the unit, and then stop the degasser and wash with water. If the vessel is washed with water, make sure the discharge is to the waste pit or keep tap of how many gallons of water was added to the circulating mud system. Be sure to let the driller know when you add anything to the system. The vacuum pump and motor should be watched for the following problems. If excess smoke is coming out of the exhaust, it's time to replace the piston rings. If the pump makes continuous loud knocks or grinding noises, check the crankshaft and the crank pin bearings, connecting rods, piston rings, and replace them if necessary. Excessive motor noise or overheating tells you it's time to overhaul your motor. See all the bay right on this intake port? Well, if yours looks like this, clean it off. It'll keep it from plugging. 
Well, that sums up the maintenance section of this show. As with any piece of equipment, if you need more help, turn to the operating and service manual. We don't think you're going to have too much downtime on the degasser. It's built to take it. As a review, let's look at the daily checks you need to do to keep your degasser up and running. Open the butterfly valve. Check the intake and discharge lines for submersion. Check the oil. Check the sight glass on the one inch line for any damage or plugging. Drain the moisture trap. Start the degasser. Check the three way valve for movement indicating the tank is filling with mud. Check the vacuum gauge for normal pressure in the tank. Should be around 8 inches to 15 inches of mercury. Look at the vacuum pump and motor for any sign of overheating. One thing we want to leave you with, your degasser should be run on a regular basis so you can fix any problems that may crop up. Check with your tool pusher to see if he wants it run daily, weekly or whatever.